Um, the numbers affected in this outbreak as of uh, 12 o'clock today are confirmed cases 24, uh, which is no change on the figure I updated Parliament with uh, this morning, which was the, the figure as of last night. Uh, the number of suspected cases has increased to 37 from the 27 that I reported to Parliament this morning. So we have a total number of uh, confirmed and suspected cases now of 61, which is an increase uh, from 51 earlier uh, today, which was the position as of last night. Uh, let me just give you um, a little bit more information about uh, the breakdown of these cases. The 12 of these uh, individuals are being treated in intensive care. Uh, that's no change in terms of numbers. Uh, the individual patients may have changed, but in terms of numbers, that's uh, the same uh, number of patients as was reported uh, earlier. And uh, there are 28 patients being treated in general hospitals. Uh, 13 are being treated in the community. Five patients have now been discharged from hospital. Um, and as we know, uh, one patient sadly uh, has died. There are also two patients who have been treated outside of NHS Lothian, uh, one in Highland and one in the north of England. But I want to stress uh, that both of these patients, although they're being treated elsewhere, are considered part of the South West Edinburgh outbreak. They have an association with the affected area. Um, so that's where uh, things stand uh, as of 12 o'clock today in terms of the numbers affected in the outbreak. Uh, one of the observations uh, made by uh, clinicians um, is that, generally speaking, and I want to stress I am generalising here and I uh, wouldn't uh, want anybody to read too much into this, but nevertheless it is... Uh, an observation that has been made. People that are being admitted to hospital uh, with the symptoms of Legionnaire's disease uh, are generally at the moment less ill than had been the case earlier in the outbreak. So we're seeing fewer people, by no means nobody, but fewer people uh, who are admitted to hospital going into intensive care and we're seeing an increase in the numbers of people who are actually well enough to be treated in the community. Now that's positive because it suggests that uh, people uh, have got much more of a chance of being ill and making a full recovery. It is likely to be an aspect of earlier diagnosis, people being alert and vigilant to, system, to, to symptoms and following the advice they've been given to contact their GP or NHS 24 and it reflects, I think, speed of action uh, by GPs. Um, so I think that's uh, an observation that, as I say, shouldn't uh, we shouldn't read too much into but nevertheless it is if anything a positive uh, development NHS Lothian services are as you would imagine uh, busy at the moment uh, critical uh, care uh, capacity is uh, busy um, but coping as we discussed yesterday NHS Lothian has well developed emergency plans in place that if uh, it was considered necessary could involve NHS Lothian seeking support from other health boards. Uh, that is kept under uh, constant uh, review, but currently, although busy, NHS Lothian is coping uh, with the demand on its intensive care services within its own resources. Uh, unscheduled care services are uh, busy. GPs in South West Edinburgh are uh, busy, as you would imagine, and they are all uh, busy, but coping with the demands on them. And I would uh, want to pay tribute to those in the community as well as uh, clinicians in hospitals who are, uh, I think, uh, coping extremely well with the pressures and demands being placed on them. Uh, this morning, uh, moving on to um, other aspects of the investigation, uh, this morning I indicated to Parliament that uh, the City of Edinburgh Council and the Health and Safety Executive were discussing the retreatment of certain cooling towers that had been shock dosed treated previously had been resampled and there was a discussion about perhaps retreating some of these towers in order to further increase the chlorine uh, levels that were present in them. Uh, I can tell you now that retreatment process is underway in the towers where it was thought that may uh, be necessary and that of course is uh, precautionary to ensure on an ongoing basis that the towers have adequate treatment measures to minimise the risk of any ongoing infection and the, the sampling and testing of these towers will also be an ongoing process. If I can turn now to 
uh, an update on uh, the investigation to identify the source of the outbreak. As I explained yesterday and explained to Parliament again today, there are, uh, broadly speaking, three strands to the investigation to try to pinpoint and identify the source. Uh, there is epidemiological analysis looking at the, the histories and the patterns of behaviour of the patients. Uh, secondly, there is microbiology testing. And thirdly, an inspection process underway uh, by the Health and Safety Executive. Uh, all of these strands of investigation are making good progress. Now, as I uh, said previously, we're not yet at a stage to put a date on why, when we might be able to tell you what the conclusions of those investigations are. Uh, but I would hope that over the next uh, few days, those investigations will start to deliver more specific answers for us on where the source of the outbreak might be. I will caveat that, um, as I have previously, by saying past experience of outbreaks like this tell us that sometimes it is not possible ever to conclusively, beyond reasonable doubt, identify the source of an outbreak. What uh, may be the case is that on a balance of probabilities, the evidence points in a particular direction. But what uh, is encouraging at the moment is that these investigations, led principally by the Health and Safety Executive and the City of Edinburgh Council, with input from Health Protection Scotland, are making good progress. Um, last uh, couple of points I want to make. Um, the message uh, continues to be that this is a significant outbreak and it is understandably of concern to people, uh, principally people living in South West Edinburgh or people who work there or pass through that area. But the advice remains that the risk to the general population is low. There is no reason for people not to go about their everyday business as normal. What we are advising people uh, to do is be vigilant. Uh, if they have concerns about their health or any symptoms that they or family members are experiencing, the advice is to phone NHS 24 and uh, the dedicated NHS 24 helpline is available to give advice and to refer uh, on to other uh, testing and treatment uh, facilities if necessary. Uh, two very last points. Um, I, at uh, his request, uh, spoke this afternoon to the brother of the individual who sadly died earlier in the week. And uh, he has asked me on behalf of the family uh, to request that the media uh, respect the privacy of the family. Uh, the family understand the understandable interest in uh, the case and the circumstances around uh, the death of uh, their relative. But they are a family uh, grieving, coming to terms with uh, the death of a loved one and they've asked me to pass on a request that their privacy uh, be respected over the next period. Uh, my final point before I open to questions is uh, looking forward into tomorrow and into the weekend, we will be providing updates uh, from uh, tomorrow onwards on a, a daily basis uh, based on the figures at midday. So you should uh, expect an update on the up-to-date case figures uh, early uh, afternoon tomorrow through the weekend and into next weekend. Obviously, if there are any particular developments, uh, we will uh, advise you of them out with that normal updating uh, schedule. But from now on, we uh, plan to give the, the, the figures update on a daily basis in the, the early afternoon.